It's Cyber Monday, a day on the retail calendar that can be enjoyed from a desk or the couch. Enjoyed from a desk or a couch. Enjoyed from a desk or maybe the couch. Enjoyed from a desk or the couch. Enjoyed from a desk or the couch. Enjoyed from the desk or even the couch. Enjoyed from a desk or. Do you want to go with the program? Go with the program. Go with the program. Or do you want to go your own way? Go your own way. Go your own way. The overwhelming majority of people go with the program. Go with the program. Go with the program. Or wherever you like, as long as you got internet. I want the young motherfuckers in here tonight, no matter what your nationality is, turn the motherfucking TV off for one week and see if you can survive. Oh my God, it is game day and we are going to the World Cup again. The streets of Porto Alegre are filling up this. I think you can sum it up by saying that mainstream culture is not a representation of human culture. So the culture that we've known essentially for the last 2,000 years, let's say, you know, from the days of Greece and Rome and all that caper, right up to today in New York and Madison Avenue and Tokyo and London and Paris and Hamburg or wherever, the, the culture that emanates out of the West is not a reflection of human beings, it is a reflection of the Empire. Yeah. Sometimes I like to compare the European Union as a creation to the organization of empires. The empires. There is really one empire and it just changes its robes, as it were, its garments throughout history. And that single empire stretches back what we think as Americans and, and Britons quite a long way to Egypt. But it stretches back before then as well. Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Transmutation. You can go and check that out at transmutationmovie.com. It's a film about uprooting the experience of normality. A piece of art that can be enjoyed and that will inspire us to go our own way. The path of the, the truth seeker or the mystic or the uh, inquiring individual, however philosophical and you know, articulate we want to be with the language. Somebody who's just looking around truthfully in the world. One of the first things you realize is that the empire sets itself against the individual. And so the only way to fit in is to stop being an individual. Don't be an individual, be a member of a collective and just fit in. From time to time, there's a resurgence where individuals say, hang on a second, no, no. We're, we're going to be individuals and we're going to represent that through essentially our art, human art, not mainstream nonsense culture, not Justin Bieber and Kylie Minogue. Skip a beat and move in the body. Yeah. Most people have cottoned on to the idea that mainstream culture is a load of nonsense. Yeah. 
and they've started to generate their own subcultures. And one of those subcultures is what we call, you know, the alternative community, alternative thinking. I know when I show up at the farmer's market that the food is local, that it's good for me, and that my dollar is going basically back to the farmer who grew the food. We, we feel that there's something important going on, which is being kept from us. The Pentagon says that climate change poses immediate risks to our national security. We should act like it. And that's why... It's been that way for many thousands of years, and this is the first time that they're really struggling to put a lid on it. So that's, that's the so-called waking up. It just starts off as a feeling, I think, amongst people. Um. We would tend to associate darkness and control with periods of sleeping, periods of numbness. And we would associate awakening and freedom and uh, truth with periods of light. sorry, but I don't want to be a, an emperor. That's not my business. I don't want to rule or conquer anyone. I should like to help everyone if possible. Jew, Gentile, black man, white. So the, the control level has shifted from physical, which it has been for a very, very long time, to psychological. So it now preys on the unthinking man, on the lazy man, and the weak man. You've been here since five, six in the morning, standing in line to meet the one and only Hillary Rodham Clinton. Did she live up to your expectations? She did. She did. She said she liked my glasses, so I mean, <laughs> that's the highlight of my day. <laughs> what are your expectations from Miss Clinton? Um, that she just continues to be the role model that she is, and she continues to inspire women and, and affect change, uh, you know, across the world and, and the policies that she's been working on. Can you describe like what specific policies within that that, that you support or that you're excited about? Um, not necessarily. And so part of the journey of awakening is coming into your sovereignty, into the idea that, well, you are your own boss. We are, we are each our own boss. And one of the, the key factors that detaches you from control is to assume that attitude, not in being massively too big for your own boots or arrogant or anything. In the same way that if we use a popular culture reference, like a Jedi would be master of himself, yeah? in a very humble, powerful, quiet, balanced manner. You have to become master of yourself. You become master of everything about you. Achieve self-mastery in everything you have. And then nobody can sort of touch you, really. And that is the natural path of the human. That's what everybody is. In a sense, all beings with a human soul are destined for that. I think once you get into the, the, the kind of vibe of uh, generating your own culture and your own media and your own philosophy, you, you sort of come very quickly as a, as a young man or a young woman to the conclusion that you think, you know, I can do this. You know, my art, my philosophy, my perspective is just as good as anybody else's and I don't have to be an academic or government sponsored or university professor to do this and in fact perhaps it's an impediment and a, a handicap to have those things perhaps it's better to develop my own learning and my own discernment and my own scholarly attitude hi my name is rachel parent i'm 14 years old and i'm the founder of kids right to know 
I'm concerned about the health and environmental risks of genetically modified organisms, GMOs. I believe that we all have the right to know what's in our food. And this is upsetting the system from the foundations up, because the very foundations of control are to uh, uneducate the young people, which is what high schools and colleges and universities are explicitly for. That's what they're for. They prepare people for the workplace by de-educating them. That's what they do. This is the way we march to school, march to school, march to school. This is the way we march to school so early in the morning. This is the way we march to school, march to school, march to school. This is the way we march to school so early in the morning. So to choose to educate ourselves freely with the information at our fingertips now is a, is a massively radical thing to do, very exciting. If you're locked up in a little room for 25 years, very quickly you learn that the, the first freedom is mental freedom, is your attitude. Open your mind. Open your mind. Open your mind. Yes, sir. Wedding bells finally rang in the life of Margie Blake. Back from their honeymoon, she and Tim are headed for a life of wedded bliss, they think. Yes, the honeymoon is over for Tim, now that he starts back to work. And it's over for Margie, too, as she enters her bright new kitchen to cook her first meal. Can she prepare those favorite dishes of Tim's, just like his mother used to make? Our families, our parents and their parents and grandparents and great-grandparents are so ingrained with the idea of class, economic class, blood class, subservience, dominance, power, wealth, aristocracy, that is so ingrained into the blood of our families. Yes, even Margie found that she could learn to cook when she discovered the significance of the terms used in cooking. And Tim will never know she ruined her first cake. We, you might say, are the very first generation, certainly mine is, who come along and say, well, yeah, whatever. I don't really classify myself based on my genetic heritage, nor do I evaluate myself based on my economic situation. Therefore, that immediately releases me from lots of systems. And if you then take that to the next level and understand that you're not a subject of any monarch, that's a, that's a fiction. You are also not a citizen. Nobody here is a citizen. If you're a, if you're a free, human, sovereign being, you are not a citizen. That's a fiction. If voting actually changed anything, it'd be illegal. And if you are enmeshed only in the theatre, it feels like you're trapped. You just turn this one dial and you're tuned in perfectly. Never watch the television, the television. The television. And so the path of the mystic, and this is a, a sacred and wonderful thing, 
is to see that that is not true, that you are not trapped in the theatre. Only your mind is trapped here. Open your mind. Once you've understood that process, and once you begin that unfoldment, the unfoldment is a simple choice, and it's a choice to take yourself seriously. There can be no unknown areas in the unfoldment, no blocked emotions, no weak triggers. You have to go in deep to balance yourself. It attaches you to your true position of consciousness, which is not here. And to get there, you need to purify your mind, which is the, the whole endeavor of the mystic is to do that one thing, to purify the mind to an extent where it locates the higher self and begins to withdraw its consent to its own bondage. The construct is, uh, is, an, is an idea and it's a very powerful idea because you're so, you know, lost in the matrix. When you see it from my perspective, you will also gain a different perspective, not only on the world at large, but also yourself. You won't just feel like, well, I'm a homo sapien monkey man. That's me, that's what I'm doing, and I'm trapped in this nightmare world. No, that's a total fiction. It's a mental construct that you are agreeing to and maintaining with ignorance. When you've seen it, you won't be able to forget that, and it will have a subtle but potent effect on how you see things, and you'll realise that this solid, massive machine, this clockwork that you call reality, is not very solid at all, not very solid at all, and in fact, the only thing that holds it together is people's conscious agreement. Yes, we can. Thank you. God bless you. And may God bless the United States of America. And if we want to change this, all we have to do is stop agreeing to it. Surrender to the collective. Give in. Regard yourself as a little node on a big network. Maybe if you work very, very hard, you might get some better stuff. There's a purpose for animal nature, which is what we're enmeshed in at the moment. And one of the purposes of it is to learn high conduct, to learn that morality and ethics and principles and discipline is the bedrock, the foundation of spiritual growth. So the point isn't to get out and escape, it's to use this place as the very instrument itself for transformation. Don't waste your time here by saying, oh, this sucks, I wanna go home. This is rubbish, it's so dark and horrible. Well, it is, because that's the part of it that you've chosen to come into, because it's at its zenith, its apex of strangeness which for for the vulnerable and sensitive mind which all clever people have that in them can be very wearisome and very agonizing at times but if you begin to shift your attitude and develop this independent spirit this warrior spirit It's his attitude and his understanding of truth that gives him that power. Not his muscles, not some magical force, but his attitude to existence, to knowing that existence is basically cycles moving around one another and that it is in itself entirely neutral. And most of the bad things that happen in this earth realm at the moment, and it's temporary, it will soon change, but right now, they are a result of our disownment of our own being. To 
say, well, I don't care. I'll just come to Earth, make apple pie, watch television, go to the office, and just sort of do the best I can and then die. Well, that's how everybody starts off. But if you continue to do that, and seven billion of us continue to do that, we end up with Barack Obama and George Bush and David Cameron and Angela Merkel and chemtrails and harp and, you know, all this stupidity. That's, that's what you end up with when you don't grasp your own determined life. Science and physics and chemistry, as we understand it in college and university, that's the construct. It's not fake, but it's only one angle. There are many degrees, many ways of looking at this thing, many perspectives and many angles. But it's so precarious, science, that I think people are starting to cotton on to that and starting to not take it quite so seriously. This construct is echoed through all corpus of the system. It's everywhere, everywhere we look, this construct stares back at us. starting to understand that consciousness isn't this epiphenomenal little puke that comes with your brain. It's actually something that is flowing all the time throughout the system and all we do is open up a little porthole in our head and let it flow through in one ear and out the other. And depending on the quality of that vessel determines your experience of consciousness. Whereas when you start to engage and make that active and think, hang on a second, maybe I am okay to create some things and to think differently. So the more engaged you are, the more that happens. And you, you start to formulate your own code, your own code of conduct as a man, a man of honor and power on the planet. And that built into that is humility and intellect, creativity, peace, destruction, creation, everything. And that, that starts to have an effect on how you change the world around you. When you want to change your circumstances, change your girlfriend, change your bank balance, change your, your clothes and your music and where you live and what food you eat and who you spend your time with, that starts to fall into place with, with your own growth. And as I've said many times, when the universe, the ecology of life around us, sees that you are taking yourself seriously, bettering yourself, becoming a truer being, it helps you and it starts to throw your synchronistic breaks and it starts to give you gifts and it starts to just give you a bit of a helping hand really and say, hey, you're not alone on this, you know, because the universe is doing the same thing we are. It's trying to refine. It's a work in progress. It's not a finished thing continually refining and we're part of that refinement and when you get that suddenly life starts to be less you know this clunky cause and effect thing and be something much more coherent and synchronistic and magical mm -hmm.